This is our UR3, it's our newest product, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a small version of the other two rollers we have in the 5 and UR10. So on the outside it looks like simply a smaller version of the same. But we really believe it's something new because what we did here is we made a robot that's small enough to fit on a working table. So we can actually have a worker doing work and then have a robot over there in the corner to help him with his work. And it can be used for, say, tabletop automation or it can be used for third-hand kind of applications where the robot is holding something while the worker is working on that. So it's even more mixing robot technology with, with the workplace feature. So, I mean, we have three robots. The UR5 is intended to be a, like a human arm for a person sitting down and doing machine tending. So if you have a... That's kind of the reach and the payload that robot has. The UR10 is intended to be like a person standing up using two arms to take things in and out of the CNC machine or another machine. And uh, it has the lifting capacity of a kind of a man standing using both arms and his whole body to move things around. The UR3 is kind of different because it's not an arm or a whole body, it's more like a hand or it's like a machine that can sit on a working table to automate things there. So it is really small compared to all those big robots around. Yes, so actually I really like small because I think this is more like the tool a robot should be rather than this big machine behind the fence stealing people's jobs. So if you want to have a robot as a tool, I guess it should be small and easy to handle. So I think actually this is what we wanted technology to be like in the first place. Yeah. So it can be used for, um, we intended it mostly for process tasks, so where the two other robots are more intended for machine tending, this robot is a little bit more intended for process tasks and for assembly tasks. For example, putting a, a glue pattern on a part, screwing in screws, uh, clicking things together, uh, this kind of application. Yeah. So the companies that benefit from a UR3 are mostly uh, companies that have uh, can say assembly work or uh, do does work in a limited space so it actually seems that space is always a problem for production companies so if we have a robot that's really small and can actually sit on a table there's a lot of uh, benefit from that because it doesn't require these big robot installations so the may the benefit is of course space saving and then of course also all the work the robot can do it has the same safety features as our other robots do. We managed to make it, you can say, if I put my hand here, it stops instead of hurting my hand. So the safety functions on the robot make sure that it doesn't uh, cause damage to the people working with it. Um, it's the same as our other robots. The robot being smaller means we can actually, uh, in newer technology, we can actually turn off the, the safety feature to make it stop at even lower forces. Uh, we also have uh, a force function built into the robot so we can make the robot apply a certain force which can be useful for polishing or grinding or these kind of applications where it can actually put a force on the part that's working. The robot has a file system inside so you can save programs and you can load programs from this file system. So it's, it's actually intended to be easy to use so we use a familiar concept of a file where you can just open that program uh, to, to change what the robot is doing. What we focus on is the price of the installation, so not the robot itself so much, I think the robot is very competitive in price, but the main point is that all the other work in, before you have a working installation is normally what takes up most of the budget, and that is the safety functions, that is the, all the software packages needed, and then the time to integrate everything. So by making a robot that's very easy to integrate, has built in software and built in safety functions, we can eliminate a lot of, a lot of the costs around the, the robot installation and thereby having a very good business case. And do you think those cobots are here to help the human or to replace the human in the end? Yeah, this question uh, we get a lot and I'm very sure that they're here to augment the human. So actually they are here to free human from doing the boring work you can say. Actually the human can be free for doing the work that machines do best. But there's a huge need for humans in production to put in passion and knowledge 
basically because machines don't know what to do. They just do what they're told. Only people have the chance to know what is the right thing to do. Because in the end, the customers are people. So it's people who know what people want. Machines don't know what people want. I guess what you're hinting at is, will machines eventually take all work away from people? And all I can say is, every time there was new technology that made an industrial revolution, every time people had found work to do that was more value-adding, it started in the first industrial revolution where we had the harvesting machines that freed up 90% of the workforce at that time. So suddenly 90% of all people were unemployed, but they all found other things to do. And it's been like that for every uh, industrial or every technological revolution for manufacturing equipment has changed jobs, but never removed the need for people.